So if you didn't believe that we have slavery anymore in America, wait till you see what a court in Wisconsin just did. Well, let's talk about it in today's video. Hi, I'm Mike Greiner. I'm a lifelong Democratic activist who's concerned about the direction our country is taking. If you share my concerns, maybe you could like this video, subscribe to this channel, maybe even click that little bell that will notify you when I post something new. So people sometimes wonder how I'm able to come up with so many things to comment on on my channel. And the truth is, it's not really not that hard. I get up every morning, I read the newspaper, and before I'm done, I'm so pissed about something that I just have to record a video about it. And that's kind of how I am today. I mean, I didn't even have a chance to shave this morning. But I'm so outraged about this story that I just had to comment on it. Now, for those of you who don't know, I'm actually a lawyer and I teach law to undergraduate business students as one of the things I teach. So one of the big subjects that I teach to my students has to do with employment law and the different issues that employers have to deal with, because these students are going to be both employees and in many cases, they'll also be employers. In fact, a lot of my students are actually human resource management majors. So they particularly need to be made aware of the different legal issues involving the employer-employee relationship. Now, one of the biggest surprises most students have when we start talking about this is how little protection there actually is for employees. I have to explain to them the concept of at-will employment, which is the law in pretty much the entirety of the United States. At-will employment is pretty much the idea, as one of my law school professors once put it, that you can be fired for a good reason, bad reason, or no reason at all, and that's perfectly legal. And as I described to my students, it's evidence of the fact that under the law in the United States, the job belongs to the employer, not the employee, and so the employer can take it away whenever they want. I'll typically create some type of hypothetical for my students where I'll describe an employee who is an excellent employee, achieves all the targets, does a great job, comes in earlier than everybody else, leaves later than everybody else, and one day the employer calls them into the office and says, you know what, I just don't like you, so I'm firing you. And the question is, can the employer do that? Most of the students usually respond, oh no, they can't do that, it's not fair. And guess what? It's not fair, but the employer can do that under the law. That's usually pretty shocking to most students. Now, it's important to note that that isn't the way it has to be. You know, we sometimes think here in the United States that because that's the way we do things, that's the only way to do things. And the truth of the matter is, for example, in Germany, they have all kinds of protections for employees that we don't have here in the United States. In fact, in large corporations, the law requires them to actually have employees on the board of directors. So employers can't simply go and fire employees willy-nilly and do whatever they want without worrying about the best interests of the employees. That, however, is not the case in the United States. In the United States, the job belongs to the employer and the employer can fire you whenever they want. Now, employers have fought very hard to keep this and they've justified it as being evidence of the free market that there is in the employment market, where employees have the option, if you don't like a job, you can go and get a job elsewhere. And employers have the option, if they don't like an employee, they can get rid of that employee and get someone else. So in theory, you have a fair market there where both sides have equal bargaining power and ultimately, they'll come to some type of agreement as to what's the best price to pay, the wages and the benefits to pay, in exchange for what kind of work. Now, as pretty much anyone who's ever had a job in the United States knows, though, that isn't quite the way things work out. In general, the employers have a lot more power than the employees because employees are not what we call fungible. You can't simply quit one job and simply find another immediately. And there might not be other jobs that actually suit your set of skills or your interests. And that might pay the kind of money that you need to be able to support your family. Those arguments generally have fallen on deaf ears of employers who love having the flexibility to be able to do whatever they want with their employees. And in fact, part of the reason that they fought so hard against unions is unions are pretty much the only way that we can kind of address this imbalance. And in one of the heights of irony, employers who basically have all the power and can do anything they want to to employees complain about the fact that unions give employees any power at all, which is really saying something considering how far the laws have been bent at this point to benefit employers to the detriment of labor unions. In a further irony, many of these rules that make it so that labor unions have even less power relative to employers actually are not in the statute. The last piece of federal legislation that was passed that addresses labor unions was the Taft-Hartley Act in 1948. Since then, though, the courts have gone on 
process where they have literally whittled away at the rights of labor unions to the point where, as one of my other graduate school professors once said, we've essentially made labor unions illegal here in the United States. Now, whether you agree with that or not, the reason I give you all this is by way of background, because we have coming from us now a court decision from Wisconsin where you have a group of physicians where one decided to apply for a job at a different hospital, that other hospital offered them a much better wage and a much better package. And a result of that, not only did that doctor decide that they were going to take this job at the other hospital system, but their other colleagues, when they heard the deal that was being offered, they decided to take the job as well. In response by this decision of a group of doctors to move from one hospital system to another, the hospital system they're leaving, called ThetaCare in Appleton, Wisconsin, actually filed a lawsuit against the employees and their new employer and asked the judge for what's called an injunction, which is basically a court order in which the court would say that these employees could not leave their jobs. Now, it's worth noting, number one, that these physicians are not involved in the treatment of people as a result of the coronavirus. Although ThetaCare made a big case in its arguments that somehow this would hurt their ability to treat people in the middle of this pandemic. The reality is that all these doctors are heart doctors. Not an important profession, obviously, but one that has still has nothing to do with the coronavirus. What's more is that in a properly operating market, ThetaCare does have an option rather than suing these employees and the hospital system that hired them. And that would be to make them a better offer, to do something to try to keep them at their place of work. But in the United States, we've come to this idea that employees somehow owe something to the employer. It's not bad enough that the employer can basically take an employee, use them up and throw them away. But now we take the approach that employees somehow owe something to the employer. Kind of like slavery. Imagine that. What's more, as many of you might be sitting there saying, oh, well, they're doctors. We shouldn't worry about them. They're not like us. But guess what? The same law that affects the physicians we're talking about here is the same law that's going to affect the people who are working at the Subway sandwiches down the street from me, at the McDonald's, or at the university where I work. What's going to take future employers from using the same approach to stop their employees from going elsewhere? This is not an unreasonable concern. I mean, something that we've seen a lot of lately is the use of what are called non-compete agreements. Now, non-compete agreements are basically contracts where employers will get new employees to sign something that says that if they leave this place of work, they're not going to go and compete directly against their old employer. Such agreements make sense when the employee is exposed to like trade secrets or when they're directly involved in strategic discussions at the old employer. But what we've seen now are some of these non-compete agreements being used by Jimmy John sandwiches for their employees. In that case, what they're just trying to do is literally make it hard for employees to leave and hard for them to be able to get a better paying job elsewhere. In essence, the employers are trying to bend the law even further to their advantage, where not only do employees not have any protections, but literally employees have no choice but to go to work at a place where they're not being paid or treated appropriately. What's more is I've heard a lot of complaints from people recently with what Paul Krugman is now calling the Great Retirement where a lot of people in this post-COVID environment have decided that rather than going back to work, they're going to retire. Hard to blame them under the circumstances. They say, why should I go back to a crappy, low-paying job when I'm enjoying being off with my family? Well, I've heard a lot of outrage from people saying, oh, it's terrible that these employees aren't going back to work so they can work at the McDonald's and make sure I get my lunch quickly. Forgetting that these people who work at the McDonald's are people too with families of their own. So it seems like as a society... We've decided that our own selfish needs are more important than the concerns that employees may have in trying to take care of themselves and their families. Now, unbelievably, this judge actually issued an injunction against the new employer and these physicians. Now we'll see how long this injunction stands. And frankly, I would not be surprised to see it overturned on appeal. But the fact that we're even talking about something like this in America in 2022 just shows how far the rights of the employees have fallen. People need to understand that it might be inconvenient for you that McDonald's can't hire enough employees. But just wait until you're in the situation that your employer decides they want to not pay you enough, and yet even so, they're going to use the law to bind you to your job. That's exactly what we're talking about here, and it's something that all Americans should be concerned about. Well, if you share my concerns about the way employment law is going in the United States, maybe you could check out this other video about the status of unions here in the United States right now. 
If you check out that video, you, you'll get all kinds of new information that you can use to let people know about how far unions have fallen in the United States and how little power they have relative to employers under the law that has basically been created by activist judges in the United States. I'll see you then. In the meantime, let's hope for continued progress. Thank you.